All right, greetings to you, friends and neighbors. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, praise God. This is Brother Ricky Duck, and uh, we're bringing to you the uh, live stream warm-up as uh, we get ready to approach that 8 o'clock hour of the Bread of Life streamcast, which we invite you to join us with at that time. And uh, I'd like to let you know we are from the Church of Jesus Christ, located 1205 High Street, and that's in Union City, Tennessee. Our service should be 2 p.m. each Sabbath day. We do have a special service coming up on March the uh, 25th on Wednesday. It is the New Year. That is God's New Year, not the pagan New Year. And uh, we're here to serve the Almighty God, not pagan. Praise God. And that is His New Year. It's called Abib 1, uh, the day, first day of Abib in the book uh, of the Bible. And... Uh, it also falls upon our old calendar that we have to go by in society, which is March the 20, uh, I believe, the 5th. Anyway, it's on Wednesday. We also have uh, coming up uh, Wednesday on April the 7th, which is the 14th day of April. It's the Passover. And it will start on a Tuesday night, a service schedule, a Tuesday night. And it will be also at uh, 7.30, because that's when we will begin the service at that time. And that would be the communion, that is the uh, wine, the unleavened bread, and the foot washing to commemorate the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on his death day. Praise God. That's the only thing he said observe and honor and do when it comes to days in that respect is for like a birthday. He didn't tell us to do that, so we don't. And... Uh, but we do want you to join us that time. And uh, now we have a subject matter today. And let's go right into the title of that subject matter. As I've already posted on Facebook, it's called Assembly Days. Now, a lot of times in our day and time in society, you can mention about uh, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, and everybody ought to like to think Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday. Because that's the way your brain has been trained through your denomination. Praise God. That's called Mr. Babylon. That's their setup. That's their... Uh, stand. But God's people have another thing to look at, and that has no nothing to do with the calendar from Rome. It has to do with the calendar from the Almighty God. And uh, so we want right now, and I say, say, we do this right here. We have posts that we post on Facebook, and I know some folks have no idea what we're trying to say. You know, and uh, you can't fulfill the, uh, uh, the description in, in a paragraph, or sometimes even a two or three cent paragraph. And uh, so that's why we're taking them one by one, and we're going to give explanation of what's behind that post that we post on Facebook. Praise God. And we're going to relate to you right now that post, as you see sometimes I've posted, it's this right here with the scripture of uh, Hebrews 10.25, as we see above. And... Uh, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Now, we have listed the Bible assembly days. That's listed in your Bible and my Bible. In uh, 1 Chronicles 23, 31, it mentions the Sabbath, the new moons. Which, let me stop right here before we read any further about new moon. There's a translation error that leads everybody to think it has something to do with that moon. But originally, it all has to do with the new month. has nothing to do with observing the sliver of the moon. You know, somebody said, yeah, the Jews, yeah, the Jews spent 70 years in Babylon and picked up on Babylon customs. But there's nowhere you'll find that God said observe the moon. And uh, so here it talks about the Sabbath, and I will replace the absolute word, so I won't just mislead you, the new month and the set feast. Second Chronicles 2 and 4, Sabbaths, New Months, and Set Feast. Isaiah 6 to 6, 23, which is a future event into, well, into the new heavens and the new earth. It mentions Sabbaths and New Month. And Ezekiel 46 and 1, concerning the uh, temple that's to be built, it also mentions Sabbath and New Month. And if you go down to verse 9, Ezekiel, it refers to the feast. Also in Luke 4, 16, Jesus went to the temple on the Sabbath and uh, spoke those statements there. 
In Acts 17 and 2, it was uh, Apostle Paul that mentioned about the Sabbath. Again, assembly days ordained in the Bible. In Psalms 81 and 3, it mentions, uh, and again, I take away the word moon, put the original word there, it means month, new month. Now, why this was located and spoken here is because it was the seventh month, it was the first day of that month, and it's also uh, the Feast of Trumpets. So, uh, the new month, the, uh, the uh, seventh uh, month, that was. Zechariah fourteen sixteen. after uh, half the people on the planet's dead, and Christ comes back, and, and we're putting this earth back together like, like God wanted it. Well, every year, the people of God from every nation are going to go and keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So, all of that listed in the Bible are the set feasts of the Lord our God. Notice that nowhere in there it mentions any other day but those days right there. So, we just read a quotation from Apostle Paul, and let's, let's look at it because it may be too small for some folks to read that there. So, we'll go right into our uh, study here. And, uh, praise God. So, let's, tra let's transfer over to our PowerPoint. Let's bring in some other things that we want to look at along with this. Praise God. So we're going to look at our subject. Assembly days. Okay, assembly days. Now, as we say, we've done looked at this post here, and that's what we started out on our PowerPoint here. And I'm sorry about the audio. I had the button clicked off of that at the beginning of that, on that part of it. And uh, it's a little hassle here to try to figure all this thing out one time. So, um, but let's go. Let's look at the uh, scripture text now. Again, Hebrews 10.25. We just showed you the post. We, we post on Facebook. And here... Apostle Paul said, Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Praise God. So Paul's mind said on this. Now, I showed you a list of the scriptures where it mentions the feasts, the new months, and the Sabbaths. That's Paul's mindset here, as he quotes that in Hebrews 10, 25. Now, I'm going to give you another scripture, and if you don't let it fly over your head, you'll catch it. And some of you preachers, young preachers, or whoever, don't let it fly over your head of the fact of this truth. Now, somebody said, yeah, but he's talking about uh, a Sunday gathering. No, no, he was not. Now, I'm going to give you a scripture text, and you can jot it down, and you can look at it later if you want to. We mentioned it before. You remember in the book of Acts, chapter 21, I think verse 24, I believe it was, I'm close to it there, where when Paul came to visit Jerusalem, and James met him, and James was bragging to, to Apostle Paul about how many believe, believe uh, uh, of, the, of the thousands that believe, and they all Isaiah's of the law. You remember, you remember that scripture text? James was bragging about it, where you would put it down. Your preachers would put it down. But James is, is, is bragging to Paul, look how many thousands of Jews there are that believe, and every one of them is zealous of the law. Now, if you also read the entire text, you'll see where Paul had to take a vow to prove to everybody in Jerusalem, and Jerusalem church in particular, that he was keeping the law. Read it. That he was walking orderly. Now, let's, let's hold it right there. If Paul, if the Jerusalem church is walking orderly, keeping of the law, then friend, what day do you think they were assembling on? What day do you think they assembled on? They were assembling on those days we just read you out of the prophets and the Torah. They were talking about the, the set feast of the Lord, the Sabbath, and the new month, 
and the all zealous of the law, because that was incorporated into the law, and also every one of them, and Paul had to prove to them, I'm still keeping it. So in Paul's mindset, he is talking about the holy days, the Sabbath days, the new months, as recorded in the scriptures. Like I said, James and the Jewish brethren in Jerusalem were zealous of the law. And they were keeping those days. So, again, proof, the assembly days that Paul's talking about are the ones listed in the Bible, not the one from Rome. Rome has tried to change, or has for a lot of folks, changed the Sabbath to Sunday. A lot of folks think Sunday is a holy day and it's nothing but a work day. Never has been, never will be. Somebody said, yeah, but Jesus resurrected on that day. No, he did not. <laughs> Bust your bubble there. But when he died on Passover, which was Wednesday, just prior to sunset coming on, you count three days and three nights by the Messiah's words himself, he comes up just prior to the Sabbath ending as we go into the first day of the week at sunset. When the women came to the tomb on Sunday morning, early before the sun rose, Jesus was already gone. He, he left 72 hours after he died and was put in the tomb before sunset on Wednesday, which puts you Wednesday, it'd be Thursday, Friday. Uh, when you start out from uh, Wednesday when he was put in the tomb, you, you, one full day, one full night, it'd be Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And you can't go into another day, it wouldn't be what Jesus said, three days and three nights. So, he's again talking about the holy days of Almighty God, not Mystery Babylon, not Rome. Somebody said, yeah, but Brother Duck, every church in Hickman and Fulton and Union City, and they're all in Mystery Babylon. I don't care if it's Acts 238 church or anything else, you need to come out of her, my people. I'm going to do what God showed me in the 1970s, calling people out of Mystery Babylon. If you don't hear, that's on you. But you're hearing the word of the Lord your God. Just what he told me to do and call you out. And that's my job. I'm going to do my job. I'm going to relate to you the truth. It's up to you to hear the truth. If any man have ears to hear. And I know there's a lot of folks that's in these different churches here. When the preacher's preaching, I don't care if it's, if it's your old preacher or somebody preaching the word. Half the time you go to sleep and don't even hear what's being preached. Now that is not, that seems disrespectful to God. I don't care what church you're doing it in. That's disrespectful to God. If you can't take care of your body, get yourself some sleep so when you're in a church in the house of God on his day and his time that you have to fall asleep and you and you can't keep yourself alert during the during the day and the time that you have in your service. Then that, that you you'll spend and you'll waste your energy. All the day prior, all the night prior, and I'm sure about everybody, even Mr. Babylon preacher would agree on that. A lot of that goes on. And you're disrespecting God by doing that. By doing that. I don't know why I got off on that note, but I did. Now let's start here in Acts 22, verse uh, 3. Apostle Paul said, now we're going to talk about Paul's mindset. Now why he wrote Hebrews 10, 25. Now I just mentioned it in a nutshell. Let's look at some scripture text now. Acts 22, verse 3, Paul said, I am verily a man, which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God, as you all are this day. So Apostle Paul acknowledged that he has caught, been raised at the feet of Gamaliel. Gamaliel was a strict teacher of the law. And I, I, I've heard reports, I don't have no way to verify or vindicate it, that a lot of times they had to memorize a lot of it, if not all of it. So Paul is well aware of what was written. And when he makes a comment, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together inasmuch as you see the day approaching, he's talking about assembly on the days that God has instituted. Again, I say, I refer you back to Acts 21 when Paul had to take the vow, prove he kept the law, and also the Jerusalem church was doing the same thing. Therefore, by doing that, they were keeping the feast, the Sabbath, and the new months. 
They were not on any other day in assembly. Now, Paul also had the mindset to know this very plainly, what we're fixing to read right here. In Genesis 2, 14, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Now, this is the King James Version. This is the way it's recorded here. But that one word highlighted seasons is translated from the word moedim. Moedim word itself means appointed times. God said in Genesis, that these let them be for signs and for appointed times and days and years. So God had it laid out, and Paul well understood that those translated were because first of all, Paul did not read this in English. I, I'm pretty sure old Hebrew. So by this right here, Paul is well understanding when God said about the appointed times. He don't read the KJV like me and you do, and we think it has to do with spring, summer, and winter, and fall stuff. Now, it was appointed times. Now, here's the book of Jubilees, uh, chapter 2, verse 8. And on the fourth day, he created the sun and the moon and the stars, and set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon all the earth, and to rule over the day and the night, and divide the light from darkness. Now, look at verse 9. And God appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for days and for Sabbaths and for months and for feasts and for years and for Sabbath of years and for Jubilees and for all seasons of the years. And that's found in Jubilees chapter 2 verse 8 and 9, which the Catholic Church wouldn't let you have when they, when they put in the word the books that they wanted. <coughs> Somebody thank God done that. God didn't do that, friend. <laughs> God didn't do that. The Catholic uh, Church has approved those books. They call it canonized. And uh, they didn't even have the Holy Ghost. They just picked out what fit their agenda, I guess. That's why I'm presuming in a way. But here again, this is the post appointed times. First Chronicles 23. Sabbaths, new months, and set feasts. Second Chronicles chapter 2, verse 4. The Sabbaths, the new months, and set feasts. Again, these are days listed in the Bible of their appointed gatherings. Their appointed times. In Isaiah 66, 23, for the future of the new heaven and new earth, God had it recorded by the prophet about the Sabbath and the new month. Again, Ezekiel did the same thing in referring to the building of that last temple where Christ comes to that temple uh, when he returns. And it will be the Sabbath and the new month. And also, if you go to verse 9 of Ezekiel 46, it mentions a set feast. Again, there's no such thing. And if you'll notice in Ezekiel 46 and 1, he referred to six working days and be open on the Sabbath. So again, your Sunday was a working day. It wasn't an assembly day by the Almighty God. That came from Rome. That came from Mystery Babylon. That's why your church does Sunday and Wednesday. That's all of those traditions come from Mystery Babylon. God rebuked the, the Pharisees and Sadducees by going with their traditions of their, of their uh, beliefs rather than the very word of our God. And he would do the same thing. Matter of fact, he's doing it through me to you as he sent me to preach the truth to you. And uh, also in Acts 17, Paul uh, talked about the Sabbath. Uh, Luke 4, 16, Jesus assembled on the Sabbath and spoke that. In Psalms 81, the new month was actually the seventh month here, which was the new month uh, and uh it had to do with the Feast of Trumpets, blowing the trumpets. And also in Zechariah 14, after half the people of this planet are killed, uh, uh, what's coming up are going to be killed, over half, close to half, I would say. And when Jesus comes back, the church, the glorified saints, the hundredfold, the bride of Christ, are going to rule the world with a rod of iron. And all nations, the people that are left, you can read it, Zechariah 14, 16, Everybody that's left, everybody still alive and breathing, will go up from year to year and uh, worship the Lord of hosts. All nations, all flesh, all people, Jew and Gentile. So again, God has given them and us no other day of assembly. It came from Rome. It's Satan deception. It's to get you off track with the word of God and get you on track with his timing. Praise God, because he knows it does make a difference with God, always will, always has. 
All right, praise God. So we see in Isaiah 66, 22 and 23, it says, For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, saith Yahweh, so shall your seed in your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new month to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh, not just Jews, folks, read it with me, don't let your preacher fool you, all flesh, come to worship before me, saith the Lord. That again, new heaven, new earth, established, renovated by fire, and uh, it's still going to have a Sabbath and a new month assembly, according to the prophet Isaiah. You believe the prophet Isaiah? Some of you don't want to believe the prophet Isaiah because you had to quit eating wrong. <laughs> you know, we went through that before. This ain't the subject day, but it's still true. Praise God. Let's look at Zechariah 14. It shall come to pass that everyone that's left of all the nations. Folks, what your preacher going to do with that? He telling you it's for the Jews. Word of God don't tell you that. He tell you... I, I don't want to offend nobody, but I can name any deny. I guess I can name all of them. I'd be right by doing it. Jesus spoke about Pharisees and Sadducees. I'd be okay to do that if I wanted to. So I'd just say your denomination. It would not make you feel better without naming yours. Your denomination preacher goes out there and he comes back and he tells you that, the, that this uh, day right here is the Jews' day. Well, let me ask you this. Do you think the prophet Zechariah is telling the truth? Do you think your church is telling the truth? Do you think Zechariah is lying? Do you think your preacher is lying something he learned in college? See, I, t- I tell you all the time, that college-bred preacher ain't worth a hill of beans. They're your false teachers, false pastors, and they're your false evangelists. Just in case y'all want to be say false prophet. Because <laughs> they like to say that. When somebody opposes what they stand for. Praise God. I ain't afraid of them. Jesus Christ told me. Gave me the bonus back in the 70s. Said fear not their faces. And I don't. <laughs> I don't. I, boy I used to. Well I used to try to run and hide. But not no more. Not no more. Everyone that's left of all the nations. Which came against Jerusalem. Shall go up from year to year. Not any time they want to. Not a day they pick out. Like y'all do on days. From year to year. On its appointed time. We just read you Genesis 2, 14. The appointed time. To worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. All nations. Everybody that survived. Anybody in America that's living after this nuclear holocaust that hits us. Anybody that survives the Antichrist that had been killed when the whole world's in the shambles. Those that are alive and remain will go up from year to year. While the saints of God that met the first resurrection are the glorified saints, the bride of Christ, the rulers of the world, rulers of all nations, will go from year to year and they will worship the Lord in Jerusalem on the Feast of Tabernacles. Folks, why not do it now? Like I said, we've got a, uh, the uh, new year coming up, March the 20. I said 4th the 5th. I may be 24th. I'll put that like it's on Wednesday. March 24th on Wednesday, I believe. And that's the new year of Almighty God. No, not January the 1st. Not the pagan day. The God's day. New year of God's day. We will have an assembly on that day as well. Also on Passover, which is April the 7th of our, 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 our calendar we go by in society. It's the 14th of Abib. It's the Passover where the time Jesus was killed and also our service will be the Tuesday night that begins that day like Christ did and we will have the communion service of foot washing. We will have the wine. We will have the unleavened bread and then after that we will do seven days of unleavened bread. No leaven in the food whatsoever. That's doing it like God said do it. So you can come out and join us. Be with us. You don't come and take a look and say, oh man, this ain't fancy as our church. Don't worry about that building stuff. That don't mean nothing. And Jesus Christ said, if two or three gather in my name, he said, fear not, little flock. Friend, listen, the, the broad way is the way of destruction. You'll find a house full and a crowd full there. 
but they will not be keeping the word of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you want to honor Almighty God, if you want to honor Jesus Christ, you won't break Sabbath, eat unclean. You will honor the days of the Most High God, just like he did it, like Apostle John said, that we should walk as he walked. We should walk as Yeshua walked. Walk as Jesus walked. He kept all of that. He didn't say he come to destroy that. Ezekiel 46 and 1, Thus saith the Lord God, the gate of the inner court that looks toward the east shall be shut the six working days. It'll be shut on Wednesday. It'll be shut on Sunday because those are your six working days. That temple here has not been built yet. That's the one that Jesus comes to because according to Ezekiel chapter 43, that's when the Lord spoke and said, he pointed out to a place of Ezekiel. This is where the soles of my feet will be. This is where I will dwell in the midst of my people forever. Ezekiel 46 and 1 says, On the Sabbath it shall be open. And some of y'all's preachers from Mystery Bible and letting y'all believe that the Sabbath was null and voided, done away with. And here the prophet Ezekiel, by, given by the Almighty, On the Sabbath it shall be open. In the day of the new month it shall be open. And as I said, verse 9 even mentions the set feast of the Lord our God. So, it's matter what you want to believe. If you love Mr. Babylon, now then just, just, just go ahead and stay there and be cozy because that's, this is your lot. But if you want to serve the Almighty God and try to be the hundredfold and be in the first resurrection, then come on out of her, my people, and start keeping the word of the Lord our God and being honorable and faithful to Yahshua and as well as his God and our God. Praise the Lord. Again, we have... The scripture text, as Paul said, not forsaking the assembling ourselves together, Paul's mindset was these days right here, not your Sundays, not your Wednesdays, not your Tuesdays, or whatever day you picked out. It's a day that God has already ordained, never changes. That's the days he's talking about. Praise God. All right, we went through the scripture text, and if you caught on to the, those things that I just spoke and said, you will see, you will perceive, and you will understand. Just like I mentioned, Paul kept those days. The Jerusalem church kept those days. They said they did. Paul vowed that he did. And all of that. So what he wrote, he could not be referring to anything contrary to that. Amen. So, may again, hope you've got something out of this. And uh, we do, again, want to invite you to uh, tune in with us at 8 o'clock for the Bread of Life streamcast. Our subject matter is Fleece Prayer. Now, I'm going <clears> to <throat> give you a good testimony and what led up to that as I posted on Facebook. In case you didn't catch it uh, first time around when I lightly hit on this, I'm going to lead you up to this point that made me fleece the Lord about the understanding of uh, the mystery of Jesus Christ, God in Christ. And uh, what led up to it, what kick-started me, and what brought me forward. And uh, it got to a point where I was so frustrated that I fleeced the Lord, and the Lord answered that fleece. And this is what we're going to discuss at 8 o'clock. And uh, I do ask you to tune in. And uh, if you're in Mr. Babylon, you just keep your eyes and ears open. Eventually, it's got, some of this stuff got to sink in enough that you say, Hey, man, Brother Doug, you're preaching the truth. You know, as long as you stuck on Mr. Babylon and you, you you dug your heels in that you're not coming out of her, well, friend, believe me, Lord, he ain't going to take a crowbar and pry you out. That's something you have to do by faith. All right, we're going to shut it down at this time. So may the Lord God of Israel bless you, keep you, and sanctify you in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Amen. God bless.